Hello and welcome to another episode of the Evolutionary Hologenomics podcast. Today we have a very special guest, uh, Daphne Perlman, who joins us all the way from Israel. Hello and uh, technology is is just just great that we can have such an international uh, list of guests. So hopefully in the future we will uh, do some more. So Daphne, welcome. And uh, thank you so much for uh, for joining us for this uh, chat, because today it's a little bit of a different episode. It is about the microbiome, as always, but it is also about art and uh, communication. So I'm very uh, excited about that. Uh, so hi, Daphne. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Uh, this is really fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm Daphne. Uh, I'm a researcher uh, from uh, Be'er Sheva uh, in Israel. Uh, and I study the microbiome of uh, ruminants, cows, uh, and all that jazz, uh, trying to make a more like, uh, sufficient, uh, sustainable agriculture uh, and le less methane emitting. Uh, so uh, as Anna said, I'm, I'm going to connect myself to the art world. Uh, as I went through my research, through my uh, degrees, I figured out that one of the more, more like fun stuff uh, that happened behind the scenes of the scientific world and publications is how you visualize your scientific story. Um, so that is something I start doing in my research group and slowly started branching out. Uh, basically helping people uh, get their science across, get their stories across um, in a beautiful manner using art, using visual aspects, using uh, the right graphics, graphic tools. Uh, and I really like, uh, I, I'm kind of the bridge uh, between these two worlds. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, really exciting to talk about, uh, to talk about it. That's, that's very cool. And it's uh an interesting uh, point of view that uh, not all scientists have but uh, actually I, I have some friends who uh, started as scientists and then they branched out and uh, some do both and some just uh, completely left research and now they're scientific illustrators uh, which is uh, one type of uh, visualization that needs to be very accurate and so on but then others also moved into uh, something a bit more creative um, that is not exactly how things look, but it's an interpretation, a fun interpretation, so it can still be accurate, but a little bit more uh, fun. Uh, and so you already mentioned that uh, you actually do microbiology uh, research. And uh, when did it start, this interest of yours? Um uh, with the communicating and visualization and making images uh, of something that uh, sometimes it's a very long, boring text. Uh, so we should be able to also look at pretty things and at the same time, meaningful uh, things, right? Yeah. Um, so it started with my own project. So I'm, uh, I did my master's in uh, the Mizrahi lab. Uh, it's Mizrahi uh, uh, lab uh, here uh, in uh, Israel um, and uh, we as part of our like group um, efforts we do uh, combine meetings and uh, presentations and really work on like the way we present our science and our story and I for, for my project like personally I really like dabbling with uh, like illustrating stuff uh, like the concepts of my experimental designs my um, I don't know, my goals, everything was always very colorful and uh, beautiful. And people would always like come up to me like, oh, your graphs are really, really nice. Your graphs are really pretty. Can you help me with this? So slowly, I started helping uh, other researchers in my lab. In the beginning, it was, it was small stuff like um, presentations and stuff like that. And slowly, it kind of grew uh, to like being involved uh, in papers and visual abstracts and descriptions of experiments, um, which is how it um, kind of grew. The minute I started talking about me interested in doing this type of uh, work, the, the, the requests started, started flooding, uh, flooding. So yeah, I'm really happy that I can 
help uh, scientists who are really, really good at their job, who do amazing research, but need some tweaking when it comes to how they tell uh, the story. And I'm really, that's how it basically started from my own group. Yeah, I, I really, really like that uh, you just mentioned the story and storyline, because uh, some very scientific papers can be a little bit hard to digest. Um, and But there is a story there, you know, there is that structure, you have the abstract introduction, material methods, and so on. So that in itself is a story. Uh, right, because it's it's like different chapters where you explain what is the problem or what has been done, what uh, you are trying to advance, then how you did it, then what came out of it, and what does it all mean. So actually, the the structure is there to tell a story, but uh, when we pick up a paper to read, it's not always uh, a fun, interesting. Uh, read so the fact that uh, we can have visuals to to aid that or diagrams or uh, of course we we still need the the graphs and the all the the error bars and the things that look scientific but making it a little bit more interesting is 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 one part and this is for very scientific purposes and it's great and then there's a whole other world which is uh, science communication and the public and actually I would say also people that are not really from your field because nowadays everything is so multidisciplinary that actually even other people who are your collaborators and work in your project they don't necessarily know the specifics of your field and we have to work together so it's it's great to have some uh, visuals to to accompany that um and in in that regard i i saw on twitter uh some very nice uh stickers and other images from you from uh, the isme conference this year and uh, so how can you tell us a little bit about that experience, how it was uh, in terms of uh, showing off your art? And did you have people coming up to you and asking uh, about it? And were they interested? Uh, yeah. So for the stickers that you saw on Twitter, it was a part of uh, 3D Omics. Uh, you talk, discussed uh, uh, the project with Anton a few episodes ago. So if you haven't uh, listened to it, guys, uh, go go backwards and uh, listen to um, Anna and Anton's um, talk. But uh, yeah, uh, we wanted to uh, like uh, have better outreach and have people interested in the project itself. And um, usually when you have, uh, I don't know, a multidisciplinary, super interesting scientific uh, endeavor of like multiple groups, it's really, f it's really interesting. And like uh, the groups themselves are really passionate about it, but most people, scientists or non-scientists usually don't re is, are not really in, in this world. So a way to accommodate it is through like a uh, nice merch and like cool stuff that you can hand out. And actually it was, it, for me, it, it really surprised me. Exactly. CEH, I want this uh, uh, sent to me as well. It could be really cool. So uh, just, but, uh, sorry, for, for the people who are listening and <laughs> watching, uh, she mentioned merch and I immediately picked up my brand new uh, tin mug. Can you hear that? From yeah. the CEH, <laughs> from the, the center where I uh, work. Uh, because, uh, yes, we made some beautiful mugs and everybody loves them. Please do carry on after this uh, short uh, <laughs> break for commercials. And thank you very much for also uh, shouting out our podcast, uh, other episodes. <laughs> Sorry, do carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So uh, in my experiment experience, it actually positively surprised me how people were like uh, excited about uh, actually receiving something physical or like some sort of like cute stuff to put on their computer. It was stickers uh, the specific uh, uh, product let's say uh, but it was really fun working on it because uh, it does have to do with the things I study the microbiome uh, of animals uh, and for me to visualize it and have people uh, like come up to me oh I heard uh, you have stickers can I have one like uh, bartering um, I don't know pins and other stickers to get uh, it was really really fun it, it's a nice uh, I don't know, atmosphere you have in conferences where people like merch. It's not a, a big surprise, but yeah. 
Yeah, and it's uh, we also have to when we do outreach and uh, communications, we need to think outside the box because uh, maybe leaflets are not <laughs> very interesting at the moment. Either people will will not pick them up or pick them up and then get awesome. rid of them very soon. Mm -hmm. So if it's a sticker or um, uh, some cookie cutters, for example, <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> something coming up soon uh, as well that uh, you also designed uh, for the 3D Omics project. I think then if it's something fun and useful that people can have for longer, then that's uh, they will um, treasure that uh, a little bit more. Um, and uh, on the screen here, so just for the people who are uh, only listening, uh, there's another beautiful image from you. Uh, there's a, a cow and then uh, um, the, the microbes that uh, are uh, inside the, the rumen or the, the GI. And looking at this, and both of us work in, a, in, in kind of the micro world. So it, I think it's super important to have great visuals for everything but especially for the things that we really cannot see. Bacteria are everywhere, but we can't mm -hmm. see them with our naked eye. So I think it, it becomes even more um, crucial to, to kind of have great, uh, interesting visuals uh, to, to showcase something that we can't really see. Yeah, I agree completely. That's kind of what drew me into the uh, like uh, microbiology uh, world is the fact that it's an entire world, an entire system that surrounds us 24-7 everywhere we go. And we cannot see it. I, I really like this idea. And this is kind of what dragged me to um, work in uh, microbiology. Uh, and actually, I want to give another shout out to uh, Anthony Van uh, Leeuwenhoek, uh, who was the first kind of... Uh, uh, science visualizer and he was also actually one of the first microbiologists so he was one of the two um, first uh, people him and hook he was the, the first one who was able to look uh, into a light microscope and actually see the microbes themselves and he was the first one describing them and uh, the fact that he was also a science visualizer so after looking at the microscope you can tell people what you saw, but it makes so much more of an impact if you actually draw it, S show people how it look looks like, show the structure. It makes people more connected, more like easier to understand. Because if you're talking about uh, invisible insects, I guess um, in those years it, uh, it was something that is not heard of. Uh, but I think uh, he's a great example for someone who like found something really substantial and actually made the public familiarize with it using art. So yeah, uh, just giving a little shout out um, for like the giants I stand on their, so their, their shoulders, yeah. Yeah, that that's, that's great. And uh, thank you for the history lesson <laughs> uh, because uh, it is true that people from, you know, from the, the caves, they they used to draw scenes of life as well. So drawing is very, very ancient, ancient and it's a, a way of uh, recording what you see or what you remember, um, as well as telling a story and kind of leaving it um, beyond the, the object once the object is, uh, is gone. So we humans have been doing that since the caves and then when we were on boats exploring the world people starting started also um, drawing the maps with all the monsters that existed in the sea um, but these were all about big things things that everyone could see so it, it's great uh, that you mentioned that Antoine was the first one to actually uh, then look uh, of course the microscope needed to be invented <laughs> for so people before that could not see um, microorganisms so that was an important step but then once he was able to see something then uh, he just drew it so that others uh, could see uh, as well and uh, then he he started doing science communication for microbiology I guess it was like hey yeah. look at these cool things <laughs> that I saw under the microscope this is what they look like yeah maybe also uh, handed out stickers <laughs> for people to <laughs> familiarize with yeah but it's it's really cool and that's exactly what i like the microbiology world and 
also illustrating for microbio like microbiology um science like science works it's kind of i have the free hand um uh, cuz uh microbes are very uh diverse in shapes and sizes and uh, ways to de- describe them uh, they're colorless so i can uh, also have fun there um so yeah i uh, really enjoy it yeah and i really like your your take um on this i don't know if you have more uh examples or not but uh, the the stickers you did for 3d omics um you know because people when we say bacteria people think tiny tiny things and then uh, if people have seen bacteria usually when you google it what appears is these brown bacteria either isolated or in a bunch or these kind of um, longer shaped bacteria but that's Mm -hmm. kind of it Uh, so the fact that you drew them a little bit more fun uh, and uh, and showed a variety of of shapes and sizes and with cilia with flagella so cilia are like these little I don't know hairs they're not hair people they're not but (laughs) just do to uh, kind of uh, give the, the visual, right? So they can be uh, like little hairs or little tails, um, but then the the shape and size uh, and what's inside of them also uh, changes a, a little bit. So it was, it was it's great um, to showcase that variety as well, rather than just making some boring circles or, or, or long shapes. Uh, yeah. So can you, maybe we can go over one or two examples of uh, things that you've done and uh, if you can uh, explain the process a little bit. Uh, so the, the ones that were fun for you and uh, kind of what they are trying to say. Uh, yeah, so this is an example I did for a microbiology course in our university. Um, so what my uh, professor tried to describe is how you make pickles, how microbes help you uh, make pickles and what processes happen there. So you can uh, look at the pickle jar and st- like study its pH and see how it changes. But in order to really understand what's going on inside, I wanted to have a little description. So on the screen here, I kind of uh, visualized uh, not only pickle jars, but also the microbes that um, reside in in there. And uh, here we can see, for example, that um, there's a a process of production of uh, hydrogen is uh, emitted into the um, pickle uh, brine uh, by uh, uh, lactobacilli and uh, basically creating selection. So how do you describe selection? How do you describe uh, the um, the brine uh, be, uh, becoming more acidic? So these are challenges that I deal with uh, whenever I visualize something, um, how to make it fun, how to make it pretty, but also how to make it understandable. So that's one of the main challenges. Uh, how do you describe a process without words? Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, one of the things I did, uh, for the course. And also it's a really, like, I believe science communications visualization is a really cool tool, uh, for educating and have people, uh, learn about the, uh, microbiology world. Cause for example, when I was doing my studies, I relied a lot on, uh, um, YouTube lectures, uh, uh, illustrated books. Uh, I, I, you cannot sit down and read papers, especially when you're not that into the field. So you need to have some sort of visual or fun uh, aspect uh, to uh, get familiarized before you dive into the deep water. Uh, so yeah, these are. This is one example uh, I've done. It's a very visual episode, so <laughs> maybe people are recommended to. <laughs> hop onto YouTube and uh, watch it. Um, And if I'm mentioning YouTube, so um, generally when we're not talking about visualization per se, but uh, I believe in recent years, science communication has become way more diverse. We have many more tools uh, to get uh, acquainted with different science, to get um, 
I don't know, to, le- to hear about uh, developments and stuff like that. So these are some science YouTube channels that I follow, but YouTube, maybe it's for the older generation. Maybe now people are now uh, super into like uh, side talk, the TikTok of uh, science, people sharing their experiments and uh, what, they, uh, what they're doing. And someone sitting in their, like uh, I, I imagine like a 15 year old sitting in their bedroom watching TikTok and suddenly mesmerized, being mesmerized by either a scientific finding or an experiment or someone walking down the beach and uh, looking at the fossils. Like there are more tools now to get acquainted with science. It's not only books and papers and it's, it's funner now. So it's also exciting. Um, yes, definitely. And uh, TikTok is, is faster than YouTube. No one has time for a long YouTube video anymore. So, but all of that, because it's faster, then you need to convey your message very well, because people's attention is going to be on the content only for a minute or less. So you really need to make it engaging and interesting and to the point. And that means no block text. It needs to be visual and the image needs to to speak or the video needs to speak for for itself. So that's, uh, that's how... Uh, this is uh, evolving um, as well but so going back to your pickles they they are so pretty so uh, we are looking here at four uh, beautiful jars with pickles and then um, they progressively decrease in pH so it goes from seven six four three but uh, and then there is uh, like a little a peek into uh, how the, the bacteria uh, are changing inside. But these collars are so pretty. I love patterns. You know what? I want this printed on fabric and I want to make a dress out of this. It's so nice. <laughs> or like some uh, pins or something. I think uh, there is a lot of potential for, for this pattern to be put on, on other things because it is very, very pretty. For the next conference, we should uh... <laughs> tote bags. <laughs> tote bags, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I I do not want to focus only on the um, microbial uh, world. It it is my passion specifically, but uh, there are a lot of invisible aspects of science. Uh, if it's genes, DNA, like inner cell uh, issues that are also processes that you have to have a good visualization to understand the central dogma, for example, uh, the movement from DNA to RNA and then proteins. You need to be able to describe it in an actual visual manner. If not like uh, from a block uh, of text, it's hard to understand these kind of things. So. yeah, better visualization would uh, help uh, for better education. Uh, but when we're talking about social media, I think, uh, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the strongest social media for science right now is Twitter, which is also like, how do you make your science super concise? Concise then um, it's really interesting. It's, it's really, for our lab, it's every paper that gets published is immediately that's the most important thing have it on twitter have it like uh like have people engage with it it's one of the more important things uh, yeah yeah actually because we here at the center and for the, the project i manage we also uh, had to do the exercise of coming up with the social media strategy so in the beginning we uh tried all the different platforms to see uh how it goes and uh, how uh, what kind of people we can reach and uh, absolutely Twitter uh, is uh, and sometimes LinkedIn but uh, Twitter is what's the most uh, used for scientists and I think it's because you can quickly say something you can reply but you can also just put the link to your paper or put a picture of something that already exists and I think this is again because it's what's available without having to create something new. So for example, Instagram is very visual and now they have reels and videos and these things. But for that, you would not paste a photo of your abstract. No one wants to see that on Instagram. So again, it goes back to 
we need visuals and depending on what kind of social media platform and what kind of content people see there then uh, I think uh, you and people like you um, if there is funding for in the future hopefully for, for this kind of thing uh, then maybe other platforms can pick up uh, and become uh, more used by scientists but we the, the content needs improvement whereas uh, i think why twitter is so widely used is because you can just paste the the link to your paper and then say something like a the headline of it or the summary and then start a discussion without having to go and create extra things exactly i agree also i think twitter is really really strong because you come in to have fun and read what your friends want to say and you end up learning a lot and being exposed to a lot of uh, different ideas so i think twitter is really strong uh, and also i just like i discovered twitter like science twitter uh this is was my gateway to and i really like it i think it's a, a great tool to share um information in a chill manner yes <laughs> definitely people need to relax and it's nice to see that it's also because everyone in the world can access it. So it's a great way to start a conversation. And uh, I've seen a lot of people actually starting collaborations just because they um, uh, commented on someone's paper. And uh, so this is a, a trend now that everyone can talk to everyone and actually then start working together, uh, which, is, uh, which is great. Um, so uh, speaking of fast format, uh, I am trying to uh, make our episodes a little bit shorter than the, <laughs> uh, the previous ones, because uh, if you're cooking or if you're out for a jog, maybe you don't want to listen to me <laughs> for <laughs> a whole uh, hour. But uh, I would like to ask you then if you, so you said that uh, you're interested in bacteria, but you're also interested in DNA and basically all, mostly the, the things that, uh, the processes that are hard to see and hard to visualize in a way, because either they're too small for us to see, or there's too many steps, or there's too many enzymes and molecules. So of course, it's much better to see, for example, a video or an image and uh, from the different perspectives as well, um, rather than reading a very long text and then trying to imagine how all that comes together in uh, in space. So did you have the opportunity already to uh, make some visuals for other things that is not just bacteria or that's your next goal? Um, so for now, I'm mainly working for my group, so it's mainly bacteria, but I, I do think science communication I'm not only skilled in like uh, in microbes, uh, DNA, biology. Uh, every like every science needs to, I, I believe, needs to be more visualized. If you're a physicist, if you're a chemist, complex concept, comp complex theoretical rules. It it would help um, readers of any science uh, be people interested in any type of. Uh, I don't know, research uh, to visualize it. I don't think it's like specific for the invisible microbial world. I do think it's uh, something a bit more global. Um, and it's also not only like illustration, knowing how to make the right, to choose the right uh, graphical uh, description of your results, knowing how to not confuse your readers when approaching your paper. It's super important It's and it's something global, not only for scientists in that matter, for like everyone working with data, everyone working with statistics. Um, so this I also aid uh, my, uh, my uh, group um, to try to understand not only how you visualize your science as a concept, also how you put out your results in a way any reader could pick it up and like understand your bottom line. I think it's super important. Yeah, that's that's very important actually. So maybe you can expand the the catalog of of things that you do. So not only providing the visuals, but uh, eventually branching out into um, workshops to uh, kind of have this chat with uh, with scientists and uh, discuss how to best uh, tell the story and uh, how to choose the, the type of graphics that best um, show the, the results. 
Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, they're all equal, are as equally important. And uh, I do think scientists should uh, pay more attention to them, uh, just from my experience uh, uh, in the scientific world, reading papers and uh, seeing presentations. Like people need uh, to have more of an understanding, what, like how important it is to to communicate your story better. Mm -hmm. Definitely, it's all about communication. We we were recently at a at a conference that brought together people from all sorts of fields, and uh, they just commented that it was great to learn how other fields can have experiments or ideas that you can apply to your own but because it's a totally different field um, people would not necessarily ever read that paper um, so uh, and because it's different fields then the better you communicate your results and your strategy then the better someone else can actually pick it up and uh, understand and apply it and uh, reach out to you uh, and otherwise they they would not so that's uh, that's super super important so visuals matter <laughs> yeah as I, and as you said we see collaborations from people from different fields uh, if it's uh, physicists who become biologists or bioinformaticians for example is one of the the I don't know the people I, I that pop into mind when I need to really um, communicate in a very simple manner uh, hard concept when it comes to microbiology for example in my field like it is important to know how to to communicate it and I also feel like this podcast is uh, really good for that if you if you're a non-scientist it's important to know how to speak to non-scientists uh, non-biologists maybe yeah, sometimes scientists speak human. They just forget that they can do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, thank you so much, um, Daphne. It was lovely to chat to you. I love creative things and science. So when we combine them together is awesome. And um, you are awesome. So if would you like to share uh, where people can uh, find you? Maybe just see what kind of uh, um, work you've done so far or uh, if they want to hire you to do their visuals because this whole episode was about, uh, hopefully we convinced uh, everyone that uh, it is important to uh, invest in uh, awesome visuals. So if people want to hire you, where can they find you? Uh, so I'm on Twitter, uh, first of all, uh, Daphne Perlman, at Daphne Perlman. Um, and then also uh, on Instagram, uh, Daphne.Perl. Uh, and I do believe we can add it maybe to the description or something. So you guys can contact me. And um, yeah, uh, if you guys need any help, I'm, I would be really, really happy to help. Daphne will make your data prettier. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Daphne, thank you so, so much for uh, your time and for the lovely chat. I hope you have a great day. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for inviting me.